Welcome to Ganitika.com. This is a website for mathematics lovers, learners and leaders. Now we are going to see what is chain rule and how this chain rule can be used to find the derivatives of certain functions. Consider this function f of g of x. Obviously this is a composite function because g of x is plugged into f of x. Therefore there are two functions f of x and g of x functions. But one function is plugged into another function. Therefore this is a composite function f of g of x. So let's consider this inner function g of x as u. Then the function y becomes f of u which means I can find the derivative of y with respect to u dy over du becomes f dash of u. Now u is a function of x therefore I can find du over dx which is g dash of x. Now if I want to find dy over dx which is the derivative of y with respect to x I can use this product dy over du multiplied by du over dx which means the du gets cancelled and you will get dy over dx but we have dy over du as f dash of u and du over dx as g dash of x but this u is actually g of x therefore we should have f dash of g of x multiplied by g dash of x what is f dash of g of x it's a derivative of f with g of x inside and g dash of x is derivative of the inner function of the composite functions g of x. If you have y as a composite function f of g of x, its derivative with respect to x would be differentiate the outer function with the inner function as it is, multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And if you have more than two functions as composite functions, then first find the derivative of the outermost function, then find the derivative of the inner function g, and then the derivative of the innermost function h and multiply each of them. But when you are finding the derivatives of each of the functions, the, the functions which are inside would remain as it is. For example, when you are differentiating f function becomes f dash, but instead of f dash of x, you will have f dash of g of h of x, which remains the same as from the original function. And when you are, when you are differentiating g of h of x function, you should have, you should differentiate g function to g dash function. Keep the h of x function as it is and then go on to the innermost function h of x the derivative of h of x is h dash of x in this case you will have x for your variable and this is chain rule so you start from the outermost function find the derivative one by one going from outermost to the innermost and keep the inner functions as it is when you are differentiating each of those functions this is the rule now let's see some examples so that you can understand this much better let's say y equal to x square plus 1 whole power 4 can you see the two functions here? The first function is x to the power of 4 function and the second function is x square plus 1 function. Therefore, we have plugged in x square plus 1 function into the x power 4 function. So, we have f of g of x which means into the x power 4 function we have put x square plus 1. Therefore, f of g of x here in this case is x square plus 1 whole power 4 where f of x is x to the power of 4 and g function is a quadratic function x square plus 1. Let's go to the chain rule. y dash is equal to f dash of g of x multiplied by g dash of x. Now let's first find f dash of x. The derivative of x to the power of 4 is 4x to the power of 3. But we need in the formula f dash of g of x. Therefore plugging in the g of x into the f dash of x just we had now. 4 power 3 is the derivative of f. But in the place of x, we should have g of x which is x square plus 1. Therefore, f dash of g of x is 4 times x square plus 1 to the power of 3. And the derivative of x square plus 1 is 2x. That's obvious. So, let's substitute what we got into the rule. f dash of g of x is 4x square plus 1 power 3 and g dash of x is 2x. Multiply them, you will get 8x times x square plus 1 to the power of 3. Which is the derivative of the given function x square plus 1 to the power of 4. Let's take more examples. y equal to root of sin x. Again, identify the two functions here. f of x is square root x function, g of x is sin x function. Therefore, f dash of x is 1 over 2 root x, g dash of x is cos x. We have all these four information, but it's not enough. We need f dash of g of x, which is 1 over 2 root of g of x. In this case, g of x is sin x. Therefore, in the place of x, we put sin x in the derivative of f of x. So, this is the chain rule. In the place of f dash of g of x, we will, find, we will write 1 over 2 root sin x and for g dash of x, we will write cos x. 
Therefore, the final answer is cos x over 2 root of sin x as a derivative of square root of sin x. One more example, e to the power of x square plus 1. Identify the two functions, e to the power of x is one function and x square plus 1 is another function. e power x is the outer function and x square plus 1 is plugged into the e power x function. Therefore, f of g of x is e to the power of x square plus 1. So, f dash of x is e power x and the derivative of x square plus 1 is 2x. Now, we need f dash of g of x which means e to the power of x becomes e to the power of x square plus 1 and g dash of x is 2x. Multiplying them, you will get 2x e power x, x square plus 1 as the derivative of e to the power of x square plus 1. Next example is sin of ln of x. Identifying the two functions, sin x is one function, ln of x is another function. The outer function is sin x, inner function is ln x. Differentiation will give you these two functions. But we need f dash of g of x which becomes cos of ln of x multiplied by g dash of x which is 1 over x. So, this is the derivative of sin x of ln of x. We can actually speed it up. We do not have to write f of x, g of x and confuse ourselves. Let us let me give you a simpler met method to apply a chain rule. Now, you have this same function that, that we just did e to the power of x square plus 1. Now, identify this function as two functions e to the power of x function but in the place of x you have another function x square plus 1. So, the outer function is e to the power of x which is in green, the inner function is x square plus 1. What you need to do by chain rule is you have to differentiate the outer function first which is e power x becomes e power x as it is but keep the inner function as it is. This is f dash of g of x just we did and then differentiate the inner function into 2x, multiply them and you will get 2x e to the power of x square plus 1 which was the answer for the derivative of e to the power of x square plus 1. Identifying the outer function and inner function, differentiate the outer function keeping the inner function as it is and then differentiate the inner function and multiply them both. This is the bottom line of this rule. Let us see another example, ln of cos of x. The outer function is ln function, the inner function is cos function. So, ln x is the outer function. Differentiating ln x is 1 over x. But in the place of x, we need to write the inner function as it is which becomes cos x. So, 1 over cos x is the differentiation of the outer function ln of cos x multiplied by the derivative of cos x is minus sin x. So, multiply them both and then you will get the derivative of ln of cos x which is minus tan x. Let us see more examples sin of root x. Now, identify the outermost function. Sin function is the outer function. Root x is the inner function. Differential of the outer function is cos function but with the root x inside. Der derivative of the inner function is 1 over 2 root x. Multiply them both, you will get the derivative. Another example, square root of ln of x. The outer function is square root function. Inside you have ln x function. So, derivative of the outer function is 1 over 2 root function which gives you 1 over 2 root of ln of x multiply by the derivative of ln x which is 1 over x multiply them you will get the derivative of y. So, you can pause the video and try to do this question and then check the answer. You know sin square x is sin x the whole square therefore, the whole square function is the outer function sin x function is the inner function. The outer function becomes 2x function which is 2 sin x in this case multiply by the derivative of sin x which is cos x. Therefore, the derivative of sin square x is 2 sin x cos x which can also be written as sin 2x. Some special functions are differentiated using chain rule. Secant x. Secant x can be written as 1 over cos x which is cos x to the power of minus 1. Do not confuse this with cos inverse x. This is cos x to the power of minus 1. Using the chain rule, power minus 1 function is the outer function and cos function is the inner function. So, power minus 1 becomes minus 1 power minus 2 using the power rule. So, minus 1 cos to the power of minus 2 is the first part of the chain rule multiplied by the derivative of cos x which is minus sin x. Therefore, minus 1 over cos square x multiplied by minus sin x which is sin x over cos square x. If you simplify this, you can write this as tan x secant x. Therefore, derivative of secant x is secant x tan x. Pause the video again 
try to find the derivative of cosecant x in the same way. Now we have the derivative using the chain rule, simplifying it minus cos x over sin square x which gives you minus cot x cosecant x. Therefore, derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x cot x and these two are the formulas for the derivatives of secant x and cosecant x. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.